G'day, how you going? I'm Ian Annapolis, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I want to show you beginners how to do realistic reflections. They're very easy to get them so realistic, smooth, wet, mirrorish, all sorts of stuff like that. And when people see your reflections, they're just going to be gobsmacked. Just like that. What happened, Ian? What happened? I just got gobsmacked. Now that's little Buddy, you might hear little Buddy always asking questions throughout the show. He's a new introduction to my channel. Yeah, thank you for having me here Ian, really good stuff. Thank you for having me here. No worries. All right, I've just got a small canvas here and I'll put some colors in the description below because I'm not sure what colors I'm gonna use for here. I'm just gonna make them up as I go, but I will get some going up the screen anyway. That way, once you're watching the video, you can use the same colors as me if you like. So come on over here and we'll get right into it. Now this is all about reflection, so I'm gonna prime up my canvas with some craft paint and retarder. What's the retarder and craft paint, Ian? It's just a solution you mix together and it's gonna stay wet longer to keep your canvas wet longer, your paint's on your canvas wet longer. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Now I'll just simply prime all this up just so as I can get a basic painting going here for a beginner how to do some reflections. Now take note of the size of this canvas I'm using. It's an A4 size, pretty much the half the size of my tutorial paintings, which are 12 by 16 inch. This is half the size. Now, as a beginner, you don't want to be painting on big canvases. Why not? What's wrong with painting on big canvases? Well, you're learning and you need to learn in baby footsteps. So this is much more easier to manage. So, and look how easy that was to paint. I can get a sky and some reflections in there. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, now like I said, this is easy reflections for a beginner. So I've got my blue. Grab yourself some blue, whatever blue you want your sky to be. Grab some gray and grab some magenta. Or oh, I've got red violet there. What are those other two colors for, Ian? Well, they're gonna make the realisticness within a painting. So we've just got our blue and that color on the canvas is gonna lighten this up so it's not gonna be so bright like that. And because it's a reflection, we'll simply Let's say there's the water line there, that's halfway. Simply painting your sky. I should have started from the top though, because you want, if anything, with a sky, you want your top darker than the bottom. Why do you want it darker at the top, Ian? Because what it does, it creates the illusion that the sky has a round sphere shape to it. Oh yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Okay, so we've got our sky there. And now simply for the bottom half, load up your brush again. Start from the bottom of your canvas, which is here. And you want on a water to give it that illusion of looking like that. You want it darker down here and then lighter to the horizon line. Just like that. We'll get that crisscrossed in. Manipulate your paint, there we go. Now I, I simply have it darker at the bottom and lighter at the horizon line. Now back down here, we've got the gray paint. Let's grab that and mix that with the blue. Not too much gray. And we want a bit of pollution in the sky. We can add a little bit of this reddish color, whether you're using permanent alindrin, quinacridone magenta or red violet. I've just simply got red violet here. And this is going to go on the horizon line. You'll see why. There's your horizon line area. So just simply put this across there like that. Simply put it across, push it right into that sky color. Now you might think, I can barely see that. I better make it darker. Don't you dare make it darker. Why not, Ian? Why can't I make it darker? I can't see it. Because acrylics dry darker. Now we're simply going to grab that color again, but more. I want more of the reddish color in there, get the gray in there, just to give some vibe in the water, okay? And like I said, start at the bottom. So with the water, you don't have to mash it into the sky like we did on the sky. You can work out where you want your darker areas. So I stamp it on like so, and I want all the bottom to be darker and some bands radiating through the water because the water has different bits of light hitting it and shadow bits. There we go. That's where you can put your darker bits. Simply wipe your putter on a brush 
and stroke that left and right and you're going to waterfy it okay simply waterfy it but if anything the bottom is still darker than the top area smear them you don't want them like distinct lines you want to smear them in and get real artistic with it there we go we've got our water and we've got our sky now as any beginner would like to do they'd like to add some clouds so i simply grab titanium white and a fan brush i use two brushes for the clouds a one to put the stamp to stamp the cloud on and another to blend i'll show you to blend in a minute to get something realistic let's put this in the horizon line there so we're making a cloud probably about this kind of big biggishness there we go and a bit more billowing out here now you know when to stop when your brush tells you how does your brush tell you to stop ian how well see it's starting to slowly pick up the blue sky color paint that's when I know when to stop and I'll blend that cloud. How do you blend a cloud, Ian? I pick up me putter on, I mean, my blending brush and a kitchen towel, and this darker colour is going to mix with that. And I want to just simply blur that down into the horizon line. I'm going from the whole base of the paintbrush, now I'm going to the corner. Why, just now, why did you change it to the corner? Because see that little bit there and the openness? You, you need to leave some of that stuff within your cloud so it doesn't just look like one smeared blob. Yeah, you wouldn't want smeared blobs all on your clouds, would you? No, and the more you do them, the better you become at them. Now I'm just slowly tickling the tops of that cloud, stopping and wiping the brush all the time. I tell you what, Ian, that cloud looks beautiful oh wow look at that i love it oh my good oh yeah i like that yeah i like it too and you can paint this if you know now i'll go to the edge of my blending brush and then i'm going to just kind of drag that lineal there because to me these clouds down in the bottom half of the sky they're if anything longer and when i finish this cloud you'll see just how good it looks and you can do it with this practice okay there we go now it's important, you're going to do another cloud, wash and rinse that brush out, ready to reload so it's clean. Now we're going to reload it again and we'll put some clouds in the sky. This is just creating all the background stuff for our real reflections. Now I'll put a peripheral cloud here. What's a peripheral cloud, Ian? That's just something that's poking out of the shot, but it's right above your head, but it's there in peripheral vision. And we'll simply put some cumulus clouds floating up here like that okay what are cumulus clouds they're those soft whispery cotton wool ones that don't have any definition on them they're just soft and sitting out there now well this peripheral cloud I'm going to blend that but leave the bottom edge reasonably dark come right off the painting carry on there so you're creating a full picture there there we go and these rest clouds they're just washed into your sky like that keep blending your brush as you go pretty much all my tutorials if you're clever enough to suss it out they're pretty much all a cloud tutorial because I do so many clouds now you can see these different clouds you've seen these in the sky these are those cirrus clouds they've got no depth and depth and sharp edges they're just floating in the sky like that Getting the rest of this white paint just so I can put some yumminess in my clouds there. Ian, what's yumminess? Yumminess is the fluffy white bits you see. I'll show you, watch this. See how that cloud is just all flat? It looks flat. We want to make it look 3D kind of thing now if we can. So we're just putting our yumminess here, there and wherever we feel. Don't think about it, just try and do it. There we go. And you can probably put a little bright bit there. And then we grab your blending brush again and softly sit the hard edges of that yumminess down into your cloud there, leaving the vibrancy, the light, brighter colour of that white there. See, so watch this little bit here. I'm using just the corner of the brush, and you'll see once I've finished just how yummy that made the cloud look and that's why i call it the yumminess i like that word ian yumminess makes your paintings look yummy doesn't it well it can do yes okay even up this peripheral one you might want to put some of the yumminess there because that's pretty much in focus and detailed as well there we go 
I thought this painting was about reflections, Ian. Yeah, it is, it is. I'm just setting the scene. We've got the sky there now. So now I'm going to put some trees here, maybe a stick or a log. Just simply grab a darker colour of your water, for instance. Let's say here, that blue and this colour here. A bit more. And a bit of the grey section of it as well. Just something like that. This is just a demonstration. Um, so I'm going to have reflections. Let's just say here, you want to get some land. So I'm just going to scratch. I'll, I'll put it on because that's still wet. It's still wet. And I want to just get something where the water can start lapping onto the land. So this is the land here, right? There like that. You've pretty much gone to the bottom of your painting. And you can just use any brush. Now see where it's meeting the water? You just want to... Just like this, watch, I'll show you. It looks like snot, Ian, I don't know what you're doing. Bear with me, little buddy, you'll see what I'm doing. I'm gradually fading it into the water and at the same time getting little bits laced out there that's showing other dark bits also. Now this paint will dry by the time I get to the reflections and we don't need it to be wet like oil artists because remember this is acrylic. Now this is the bit we're going to make look under the water. I've just grabbed my liner brush, fresh out of the container. It's dry, so I've just dampened it. And the titanium white, I want to just lace that up. Now it's not the craft white, that's too thin. Why can't you use thin paint? Because it'll just grind into nothing and you won't see it on your painting. So that's why I use this one. Now I'm just grinding, lacing that onto the brush. And we'll start with a band coming from here. So what I do, the bottom half of this line is what's on the ground. So we're coming there. Try and keep these shapes lineal. Now I've got a scrumbling brush. The bottom half you want to leave and the top half you want to just crisp back into the water and you're doing it in left and right motions. Now because this is such a tiny little painting I'm demonstrating here, some of it might edge might go away so that's okay I can simply pick up the white paint like this and do it again it's no rush don't feel you've got to do your job in half an hour you can take months to do a painting so I'm just showing you again if it rubbed away and you're going like this now gradually tingleberry that back like I'll show you here these are the tingleberry backs over those shadows there look don't do too much because it could dry on you. And you want to left and right scrumble them over the water. Some over there as well, over the bit without the shadow, just to give it the realism of it all. And this is all part of your reflections and realism in a painting. You can do this. I'm going to get that paint a little bit wet. It's not coming off the brush as well as I like. So I'm going to come around here, jingling and jangling like that, and pull the top half back into the water. And we're sinking all those dark bits down that we put in there previously. So let's put some more here, just like that. If anything, I'm keeping them long ways. I'm not going all up and down and winkety wonkety. And we've got the water sitting over the land. Let's put just a more distinct one there. And we're simply going to blend this as well, just the top half of it. You've seen me do water, those regular viewers of mine. Anyway, there's some water just simply flushing over the land there. And it looks like that little bit there is going underwater. I'll go over that dark bit there if I can. Leaving the dark bit there. It's knowing where to leave the darks and lights sometimes we destroy them all and we think we're going well and then we look at our painting and it looks a bit snotty. I like it when you say snotty, Ian. It sounds snotty. Yeah, it is. All right, now I want to get on with some reflections. Just to show you what else you can do, I added some red into that colour to make it a bit darker. Getting a liner, train your liner to pick up the paint like that. I'm twisting it, twisting the tip into there, okay? And you get a darker bit and you can just simply gingerly sit that foam that's on the sand down very skinny like you're putting a shadow under it. some of the shadows can warp a bit like so when it breaks up 
stop, load your brush again, and you simply lining that up. And just this makes realism for inner painting as well. Knowing what size to do these procedures and how much. And there we go. That's kind of sat that water down. Now we'll put a bit of an island, some trees and something out here with some reflections in this water. And because this is a beginner's tutorial, I'm just going to make it simple. I've got sap green, I've got yellow ochre and I've got black. You need the greens, a yellow ochre, blacks and white. There's certain colours you need in your arsenal. Yellow ochre is one of them. Now I'm going to pull some of the green away just to get the base colour. So we need three colours for our trees, simple trees. And I want to blackulate some of that. Wow, that's a big word, Ian. Blackulate, what's that mean? Oh, I just mean I'm adding black to the green, really. It's self-explanatory. You can use forest green. I've just got sap green here. Now we're going to map in our bunch of trees over there on the water on an island or something. How come you're making it dark? Because in general, I put the dark colours down first and finish it up with the lighter ones. So we've got our brush. I'm just using a flat filbert here. And these trees are probably going to come from there. There's our horizon line, let's say about here. So we've got some nice, let's say about that far. And I simply want to make the trees coming off the painting. So I'll get the top done first. We're just mapping it in. Come up if you want. Get some distinct shapes there so we can put some distinctive reflections in our water. It'll set that cloud down. Don't worry about hiding your cloud. Just don't cover it too much if you don't want to. It's up to you how much you cover. And we're simply just, this is all out of my head, this picture. No reference for this. Now you block it in. This is the dark colour, okay? So now we could have dried the painting. We've got it blocked in. Now we've simply got to put that in the water. How are you going to do that? It's quite simple. Here we go. We'll get there and I'll pretty much come there, coming up to that bit, coming down to that bit, coming to that blob there, back up, about there. Look at this, it's just mumble jumble, but it's going to make quite an effective reflection. So now I'm just put a little bit of water with that just so as I can block the bottom half in. Oh, and now, and now you just get a brush and just pull it down. No, you don't pull it down. That's a very easy way to do it, but I want to show you just the amount of bullshit you can put into a painting. Once you know them, they're not hard. So we've pretty much got that blocked in. Just on the top half, I want to give the trees their canopy tops. I'm not going to worry about it in the water. Now, so I'm making my canopies now. Now the paint's dry, I've given it a bit of a dry so it's not going to keep scratching the bottom layer. Get this just the way you want. And a good habit to know is the edge of all these trees not to leave dark. They've got to be hit with light. Now I'm going to come off here and just make my tree tops there. Look at that, see we're just simply detailing it with the flat filbert brush. I don't have to go to detail putting that in the bottom. Why not? Well, that's what this video is all about. I'm going to show you why. Get yourself a flat brush. Grab that same paint. And we want to chisel the brush. So when we're on the canvas, we can get lines like that. Okay. And this is where you simply make the realistic reflections. Out here is further away. So if anything, they're smaller and tighter together. And what we're simply going to do is make, I call them scallops. Now they might have a proper name, I'm not sure. Make sure if your brush is leaving the lines too fat, pick up another one and find another one that's going to work. And we're simply going to create these scallops. Come out from your land mass and then slowly bring them in not too far out you want to replicate what's up top sim to a degree leaving bits of the water color in between it and we're simply scalloping now if anything these are going a little bit too fat for me but it'll be all right you'll get the gist of what the guru's thinking now we're coming closer 
they can be a lot more heavier, or oh, not that heavy a dag. coming off the mass, but don't just leave them like a comb look, you've got to stagger them and scatter them. And then you will join them up, just so it looks like they're melting from that mass there. So now I'm getting them joined up a bit better, because I don't want to see too much of the line, you want to kind of disguise that. This is how you get realistic reflections. And a beginner can do this. It doesn't mean watch my video if you've never done it before and just go out and try and paint it and go, nah, can't do it. Well, how do you do it then, Ian? You practice. You've got to practice everything. Practice is the key. A lot of people know, but then again, there are some people that just simply don't know that they need to do a lot of practice before they pull off a procedure. Then once you've done that, simply grab the watercolor and just gingerly splice some of the watercolour, but just gingerly into that black. Come back out so they've spliced in quite nature-fiable, like nature's meant to, to happen. Just little bits here. So you've like spliced them together. That's the colour we've blocked in. Now we're gonna simply just grab some black. Try not to have it pure black. Just let a bit of the green sink into it. And we want a real darker version now. What are you gonna do with that, Ian? What are you gonna do? How's that gonna fix that up? That's gonna make it all dark. No, it won't make it dark. We need the dark, little buddy, to help show the brights. Now, see your horizon line right here? There's your horizon line. You need this dark pretty much, there's my horizon line, pretty much scampering through the middle of all this. So we're now we're doing the top and bottom, so I'm just, Stamping it on, everything's dry, and I'm scratching it up within that tree, and then pull some of it down into your reflection as well. So just simply pull your reflections down in a scratchy mood like that, okay? Because they're just reflections. And this needs to come all the way along the horizon line there where it's meeting the water. Now, if you don't put this in there, you will notice something's not quite right with your painting, something's quite missing. And it's the darks that you need in there. This is the depth. Let it be scratchy and hairy. Pull it up just like that. So you can just ginger around all the way across there, getting that dark in there. You really need the darks. The darks bring stuff home. If that was a bit too dark, I've just upped the lighting on the camera just so the people at home can see. Sometimes it can be very tricky, but you pretty much got a line there and you scratched it into your tree and you put some dark pockets up there and replicated them down below. Now, remember I grabbed the yellow ochre? We're going to grab this green and we want to mix some yellow ochre with that now. So we'll gradually Grab some yellow ochre and gradually add the green. Always add the darker value to the bigger, lighter value. And we're going to create some kind of realistic greenish colours here. They're not loud and white and yellow and green cartoony looking because you want to create realistic, realistic reflections and realistic colours in your greens. Now I'm going to simply wet the brush. This is purely for beginners out there to learn what to do. See, you've mixed a pile and you want it wet. What do you want it wet, Ian? Why has it got to be wet? Wet, 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 this, wet, that. Because when it's wet, the wetter paint sticks a lot easier than thick, gluggy paint. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean now. Yeah, yeah, right. Tell you what, Ian, you mixed the living buggery out of that paint. Yes, I did, but now I've brush mixed it. So now I've wiped that brush and now I want to just simply load it up so I haven't got big, ugly, uncontrollable blobs on there. And we simply want to start highlighting our group of trees. Now, gingerly start from the top, the same brush strokes, using the same brush. And where you've got some darks, you can leave those pockets there. And we're simply going to go this way, that way. That's how I do it coming in front and where that all this black that we put there let's put some over that black you just sort of 
gingerly step it onto the black a bit. It really accents it. See how that's looking like a reasonable trees? Let's come over here and simply do this area. Each time you load your brush, chisel the paint on there so you've got control how it's going. Don't just whack it in and hope for the best. Yeah, you never want to whack it in and hope for the best, do you, Ian? No, not when it comes to art, little buddy. When it comes to art, it's a lot of practice. I reckon you practice until the cows come home. Well, I do do a lot of practicing, but, um, you know, I'm no great artist, but I know what I can paint for a beginner, how to get them to have something looking the way it should. So when someone's looking at it, they're not scratching their head going, oh yeah, that's nice, but what's that bit there? I want the viewer to know exactly what everything is in your painting. I've done the top, see that how it looks real green? Now see the bottom? Just simply hit and pull down, but not too much all the way up there. Just tinker it into those bits there, tinker it. Everything's tinkering now. Here we got some here. Tinker there, tinker there. It come all the way here. We're just hitting it and pulling down. So you just simply follow the top. Simply follow the top. And with any amount of practice, you can do anything. How do you think we all learnt to drive a car? We practiced. How do you think we all learnt how to walk? We crawled and fell over. And when you fail in life, you're learning. You don't want to do something straight away and conquer it. You need to fail to learn. So we're just pulling this down now. Nice and softly. Don't bang it like that. Like I said, just dance some of this in front of the black. Just like that. Let's say a bit there and a little bit there. And you want that emulating in the reflection as well. All right, I want to just, whatever's in the brush, I just want to mix that with my yellow ochre. I'll do it over here. Now I feel I might need a little bit more of that in there, so I'll put some more in there. But I want it a lot brighter than what's up there. So we're going to mix this. Now see right next door there, that's the white. Get a bit more green in there. It is a lot brighter. Now it's not loud and cartoony. Let's add a little bit of white to make it opaque. What does opaque mean, Ian? See how that's got a solidness? The opaqueness makes it more dense and brighter, in my opinion. And simply back over here, we're going for a realistic reflection. Don't go everywhere. See how we put all this colour on now? Don't go over all of that. You just want to gingerly and right to the edges because the light hits the edge and just gingerly highlight bits of this stuff now. I'm going to come down there like so and probably tamper a little bit back there. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, see what I've done? Now, while you're doing it, simply put them in the water. Bit there and a little bit all the way up there. Now don't fret, if you feel I've made me reflection too bright in places you might have had an accident, you just grab the darker colour and re-stamp it back over. Now I'm going to simply just grab some more. Over here can probably be, because it's further away, we can probably make that lighter. Just like that. See the edges, the edges, don't have them dark, the light hits the edge so you have them bright. The light's hitting the edge, remember that. Doesn't have to be all the edge, just periodically here and there, bits and bobs. And then the same down here. Pull it, pull it. Got a bit about there. Pull it. See how easy it is? It's not rocket science. It's just knowing what to do. Right up there in the light, the light's hitting it, highlighting a bit there and then highlighting a big bubble of trees and leaves and stuff here over that darker area. Right the way down here. Tell you what, look at this brush. It's supposed to be a flat cat tongue, but it's munted up. It's expensive too, and I'm not happy with it, but 
and then we simply put those in there as well that bit there and that bit there okay and another reflection now we'll just probably simply have i don't know a stump a log or something up here and you might want to sit your water down now please with a painting like this don't go getting a knife and putting on those big thick white bands because you're putting two different styles of art together we're going for a realistic one here you can do realistics if you know what to do so what i do there if you don't have any grab yourself some glazing liquid this one's a gloss now if you don't have it and if you have some of that white pva glue that you used at school you know that stuff that dried clear works the same then get yourself a flat brush let's say one about this wide okay now instead of putting all of that knife big thick marks on there which i don't like grab some white you don't need much white how much do you need in a, a, a lot or bugger all no i said you don't need much so, so really you need bugger all eh yeah that's right now what's in my brush is enough to mix in all that there because this dries see through it and we've made a very transparent looking paint and you want to put these on before you put a tree or something there so i'm going to go right across the horizon line i'll start out there get rid of the bulkness off it there we go now see the horizon line i'm resting on my bullshit stick and i'm going to come right across there find the pressure and come right across the water like that bang move it down and then just start making little bits just sink in the reflections now see if i put too much more white in it i would have went over all my reflections and then you'd be thinking all oh, that work was for nothing but we've got this it makes your water look like it has a film on the surface and this will dry a little bit more clearer when it's dry that'll do you can simply see what that's done to the painting now simply grab yourself a detail brush i've got a zero liner brush here you use whatever can work for you and i've got some black let's just use simple black for this and we're going to just make a bit of wood sticking out of the water with its own reflection so i want to put it anywhere you want i want to contact let's say uh where are we here i want the reflection about there so let's do it about here so contact now go up let's see how that broke i'm going to wet that paint a little bit more because it's not inky enough i want to go up in the straight line stop jut out here in a straight line stop twist your brush as you go make a distinct shape this could be an old lamp post that's been flooded out or it can be just a dead tree have a little bit of a broken bit on there and point it up that now you can do this you really can do it okay we've got a old tree in the water but it looks a bit weird it looks like it's floating so what we're going to do now is simply get this right flatten it right off you can go past the edge a bit and you want to kind of bring that down i'm bringing that down now i'm going to go there so i'm going to go there and now here and then that can just really fade away like that then we can join it up just simply don't feel oh my goodness i can't do that you can do it it's quite together there and then as it comes closer to us down the bottom of the painting these lines simply just break away further that's why i left gaps here and it's just creating ripply smooth water reflection so now we've got nothing there nothing there a little bit there see how we've broken it up same principle what we've done there we just, just keep playing with it now until you feel it's in uniform with the top that's all i'm doing now that's all that's in my mind i'm going to grab a little bit of this white just a little bit less is best and i want to pick let's say the left side of it just to give some kind of
light and dimension to it. And I'm just going to go right to the edge of that black bit and just let it scratch into here. Right, I don't want to leave a black edge on it. I want to get right to the edge. And just gingerly, using the tip of this little detail brush, I'll come up there so it looks like a pen. Using the tip of this detail brush, I'm just scrumbling it, scratching it back into the tree there, see? There we go. It's giving it a bit of life and realism. If you want, grab some pure white on the brush now. I've got a little bit of pure white, but it's still mixed grey with what's on the brush. And let's just say here, gingerly, these little lines are what make it. The little pin lines, the little pin dots. Not everywhere, just periodically. I want to, here in between there, bit there. That's it. Don't just to finish that off, this white paint that we mixed with our glaze, grab a bit more glaze over here. Just a little bit of that with it. We want it a bit weaker. Then simply your reflection, where it's on the water there, get a line of water there like that, right past it. And just simply where you've been, I'll wipe some of that off just sync that reflection with some of this as well. See that cloud there? I can probably grab some of that. And just from, I don't know, let's just see if this is going to work or not. Let's go from about there. Let's pull a bit of glare down onto that wet sand there. Nice and straight. And there we have a realistic way to do reflections for a beginner. So I'll put my autograph on there. I'll just get a bit of um, black over to the left hand side there. I want to thank everybody who supports my channel. They, the ones that the patrons are pledged to my channel every month, much appreciated. People like you that support my channel keep me going. And this video was a good introduction for little buddy. Yes, it was good for me to be here with Ian. I always ask him lots of questions. Okay, now no matter how far you are in your beginner journey, with some practice, it takes a lot of practice, you can do it. All right, what a lot of fun that was and very interesting, something you can put into your paintings as you progress and go through your journey of art. Tell your friends if you like what I'm doing, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.